this one, I think it can be fun. It's obscure, obsolete inventions. And I feel like I love shitty inventions. Uh, I don't only feel, I know, I love shitty inventions. And this one is from Salmonella. I need to subscribe, man. I, I love this guy. Or oh girl. I'm not gonna presume anything. But it's real cool. Alright, after months upon months of unrelenting pressure. Do you guys have some like ideas of what is like a uh, invention that is like obsolete but really cool? Hmm. Do I have any? I don't think I have. Pressure, but you yeah, great talk on Valentine's Day. Characters on Twitter. I finally got a merch store. Let this be a lesson, Whoa, kids. With enough nice. harassment, you can achieve anything. Hey, anyway, yeah. go check it out, or don't, whatever. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Great moral. Hey kids, if I learned anything from my middle school career, it's that what may seem like a good idea initially will often be remembered <laughs> only as a foolish mistake. Here's a few oh pieces my god, of I don't want to think about my mistakes, man. It's gonna haunt or it's gonna make me cringe too much. It's too many of them. <laughs> yesteryear that have since fallen into total obscurity. Hey, so Mr. I've Bane. always believed that there's no point in having many small things when you can have one big thing. Why have many shrimp when you can have one lobster? That is true. I feel like this is a thing though. Everything like jumbo, jumbo mumbo, insanely biggie. Damn. Why drink many glasses of milk when you can eat one udder? Why have many cheese its when you can have one cheese them? Patent pending. And why have many street lights when you can have one moon? <laughs> Look at that street light. It's just like boom. We're gonna light up the entire thing just with one light. Hell yeah. Light tower. These guys wow. were real popular back in the 1880s and they were popular? It's a it's a real thing. It's just not a drawing of a concept. They existed? Tesla would love that. Yeah, I think so too. I just realized I had my my the sound of the video like really low. So the first First one we checked out is probably garbage. Or maybe it's okay. I don't know. 90s, often standing at over 150, 150 feet, feet tall and illuminating several blocks from a single point. Not very well, mind you. Matter of fact, they were so dim, we didn't even have the conscience to just call them light towers. Had to go and stick the moon on the front. So be <laughs> Moonlight towers. <laughs> I love it. But these, is this a good idea or a bad idea? What is the pros and cons here? I'm very unsure. I'm very unsure. It sounds like kind of cool. But it also, uh, it was okay. Okay, thank you, Skelgard. But yeah, I, I'm very unsure. Like, what are, what are the pros and cons? They're like very uh, big. So they take a lot of the view, I guess. Maybe that is a con. Uh, maybe they're too bright. <laughs> <laughs> People didn't get their hopes up. But thanks to our good old friend, the inverse square law, you still needed a fuck ton of light to pull this off. So they used incredibly harsh and oh. UV emitting arc lights instead of incandescent bulbs. <laughs> you can see your skeleton, basically. Bombs. <laughs> all the light of the moon and all the vision damage of the sun? Talk about a win-win. Sadly, these beasts have fallen by the wayside over Gee. the past century or so. Except for in Austin, apparently. But they use friendlier mercury vapor lamps in them, so they only get half points. Now, anyone who's been around a baby long enough knows they always have a cloud of ghoulish stench hovering around them. Jeez <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Babies have a tendency to smell sometimes. But you can't change their diaper though. Somebody better air out that musty little muskrat before grandma starts drooping again. You could stick him on the clothesline yeah, for a Texans. while, but knowing that little moron, I'm sure he'd find a way to hurt himself <laughs> oh, somehow. Damn, Introducing yeah. the baby cage. Fin oh no, the baby cage. I feel like I've seen this. I've seen baby cages. And it's so scary. I would never, ever, ever, ever let my baby dangle outside. Holy shit, like that? No, 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 no. Needs to be super duper safe. Not like that. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, Texans, they go crazy, man. They, they, <laughs> Texans are so cool. Ay, ay, ay. Very inefficient. Yeah, that is the reason, probably. Mm. Finally, city dwellers all across the nation have a way of unleashing their postnatal funk on the unsuspecting passerby below. These were in vogue for a while before falling out of style a bit of the way into the 20th century. Because apparently society started deeming babies uh, more valuable than air conditioners. I don't really get it personally, <laughs> but this is also around the time we started putting lead in gasoline, so it's probably for the best we kept him inside all day. Matter Jesus! Jesus! Do you see that? His brain got like smooshed. Did you see that poor guy? He was smelling gasoline. I was I was running I was walking around with Sarah the other day and uh, like w in the stroller and I was like talking with Sarah. I tried to like have conversations with Sarah, but she she can't answer me though. She is she knows a single word. 
uh, no word, I mean, like, n not a single word. <laughs> but I was talking to her about, like, electric cars and, like, uh, uh, gasoline cars and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm so sorry, Zara, that you have to, like, s sniff in all of this shit uh, from the street here. Maybe one day we don't have any uh, more of these gasoline cars making, like, smog. But uh, today is not the day. And I think Zara got a little bit of, like, uh, brain damage there. Probably by just walking. Kept him inside all day. Matter of fact, it's my firm belief that without kids growing up breathing lead, there's no way pet rocks would have taken off in the 70s. <laughs> wow, alienating baby boomers. He's so brave and controversial. <laughs> pet rock, I just love that so much. Now, in the days between the Great War and the not as great but still pretty alright war, people were trying to find efficient means of detecting an incoming air attack. They climbed their nation's tallest mountains to seek the wisdom of their greatest elders, and the wise men said, hmm, big ears. So that's what they did. These giant discs were known as acoustic mirrors and were designed to focus incoming sound over a five meter diameter into a single point. They were reasonably effective as listening to- It kind of worked. Those big like ears. <laughs> you have to have a guy standing there though, just like, is it an ear strike? No, I think that is just uh, Bob's farting. I think it's Bob's farting. It's kind of kind of efficient, but yeah. Uh, but what are you saying? Aren't pollution our best friend? Well, I think you are working for the biters, man. You're not. You're not representing the humans, then. Devices. A few of them in With Britain the were able to pick up the sound of a plane from all the way across the English Channel. Of course, radar came along soon after, rendering these things completely useless beyond Whoa. looking brutalist as hell. For real, instant album cover material right here. Yeah. Ah! One of the pet boys is pulling a oh. Spanish. Inc oh! What the fudge? Oh! I hate devices like this. <laughs> God, I hate them. I'm getting so such a like uh, cringe feeling position know? on this poor wayward harlot Huh just kidding despite the fact that this looks so very very much like a state-of-the-art instrument of torture It's actually just a beauty micrometer <laughs> Will now an AMA streamer? <laughs> yeah, ask me anything bro Ask me anything, I'll try my best to answer Maholik, and shout out to Maholik, you're fantastic. Think those shoe size measure things at Foot Locker, only instead of one primitive measurement, it records the entire topology Whoa. of your face and skull at once. With this data, a trained Whoa. cosmetologist would be able to pinpoint exactly what features of your head should be enhanced and reduced with makeup in order to achieve a maximum calculation. They did this for makeup? They did all of those crazy weird measurements for makeup? Don't you have eyes, bro? Can't you just like paint around the places? But I guess I guess this was like someone that was more into numbers than like uh, anything else. Probably makes like art with like uh, a ruler, just like e -e 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 -e. and it's probably really nice. But people are different, I guess. I shouldn't be so rude. Related attractiveness after you've paid for their services. Clearly, this device must have been effective. After all, I would feel very sexy sitting there in a chair, getting measured with like this device. I would feel like hot, ready for the town, man. <laughs> Bro, beauty is entirely objective. What, I of the beholder? <laughs> Check the name tag, buddy. Apparently, though, women didn't like being strapped into a birdcage and having their every minute flaw meticulously laid out yeah. in front of them. It's like your nose is a little bit big and your eyes are a little bit small. Your chin is too weak. It's it's not nice. Just put some paint on the face, man. So this thing never really took off in the end. Next we have <laughs> the Humlauch. This was a device made Whoa. during World War II designed to let infantry shoot around corners. It's like the Germans sat that down and watched that part in Tom and Jerry where the it's conniving like, rat bends oh. the gun barrel back at his adversary. They said, Mein Gott. They came in a variety of angles. <laughs> mein Gott. <laughs> well, you can get different bends. Well, I know some people can like see themselves in this, you know? It's Valentine's Day. You're allowed to think like this. Whoa, look at the, the last 90 degree bend there. It's crazy. I wonder if they work really well. I guess it kind of sucks if you want to shoot straight forward though. It's like you have to shoot to the side and just like pew pew. <laughs> was between 30 and 90 degrees and it even came with a little periscope so you could see what you were shooting at oh. but as we all come to find out when we reach adolescence cartoons are the arbiters of deceit because these things would invariably <laughs> break within the first couple hundred shots or so yeah yeah it's gonna be a lot of damage in the corner there probably it makes sense it's just like i can shoot around the corner two times but not three or sometimes only only one time 
And even when they did work, the rounds would fucking explode from the massive acceleration, turning a deadly bullet into an ineffectual spray of shrapnel. These were so ineffective that only the 30 degree model ever saw significant production beyond prototypes, and even that was very limited. Say, you ever yeah. look at regular mouse traps? like, if it's 30 degrees, it's not that much. It's not helping that much. Then you could just have your straight thingy and just point it downwards, I guess, or like hold your arms out and shoot around the corner. You don't need... <laughs> But I guess the Germans were thinking just the tip. We just just show the tip. Don't show ever anything else. Perhaps and go, hmm, not enough property damage. Well, check this out. Patented in 1882, it's the revolver mousetrap, brought to you by the makers no. of the snail trebuchet and the cockroach claymore. Thanks to the marvels of the modern era, all those... T Is that real? Killing a rat with a... <laughs> a revolver? Just imagine li laying in bed. You have this thing under your house. You want to like get rid of a couple of ma mices, mises, and you're just like snoring, <laughs> enjoying your time, and then it's like, bow! <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you shoot your wife because you're just so into, it, or like not into it, but you're just so scared. I don't think this is a great idea. <laughs> Bullets through the roof. <laughs> yeah, if you have it in the like the addict, and <laughs> it goes up. Goes off, shoots you while you're sh shitting on the toilet. This is not a great idea. Oh my god, the person that made this should be fired. Okay. Tiresome hours of intense varmint slang can be outsourced <laughs> to one little on gadget one, yeah. on the floor of your kid's playroom. Now when you hear a gunshot in the middle of the night, you can rest easy knowing that, one way or the other, there's one less pest for you to deal with in the morning. <laughs> Boom. 1850. Steam locomotives are all the rage. You're in the transport business, but all you can afford is a couple dumb horses. Sure, they move things from- Look at those dumb horses and their dumb faces. <laughs> <laughs> point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the Ooh, cost. Toilet shitter shooter. Yeah, buddy. But your cool rail riding friends called you a whack ass and it really hurt your feelers. Oh, well, have we got the invention for you. The Impulsoria uses an ingenious system of treadmills to turn that horse to be beckoned into a force to be reckoned with. Sure, it's expensive what? as hell to make and limits your services entirely to railroads, but just look at it. Instant pussy mobile. Slap some rims and a spoiler on that, you're laughing. <laughs> just rims and a spoiler. Power out with two to four, two, two to four horsepower, which is basically two to four horses, right? Aye, aye, aye. This machine is recorded at having a maximum output of two to four horsepower, which sounds about right. And it didn't see much use outside a couple <laughs> exhibitions. Now, if there's one hobby that people in the past... Wow, is this how they figured out, like, how to do horsepower? Is that how they calculated it? They just checked how much output you got from that bad boy. There's one hobby that people in the past enjoyed, it's smoking. Who boy yeah. do they like smoking. And with every great wholesome Sweet. activity comes a million novelty items to go along with it. Everyone's seen the long cigarette, oh, yeah. but how about the really long cigarette? Want to smoke? <laughs> Did you see that stupid thing? <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> uh, going out in a group, going for a smoke and you have that long thing. And all of your friends also have a long thing. And just like... And you smack each other in the face with your long thing. Wait, this sounds wrong. This sounds like something totally different. But you know what I mean. Holy moly. But I would really love to have this long thing. You know, I would love it. How to smoke without being a smoker. <laughs> yeah, it's like to get anything. You have to have really good lung capacity at least. So I guess after your lung capacity kind of disappears... You just like don't get any smoke in your lungs, so it balances or like then you s stop producing the lung capacity. It's like flattening out. It's all good. It's a great invention. Should have it. Everybody should have one of those. And then, <laughs> yeah, you need a muscular jaw as well. True. Hmm. Hmm. We would all love to have a long thing. Figure yes. it. Want to smoke in the rain? Here you go. Going snorkeling? Hey. You there's a smoking in the rain device? Wow, you have a little parasol on top of that smoke device? Wow, that is so smart. I need one of those as well. I need one of the long ones with the parasol on the end. Or I could just... Wow, that's a great idea. If you have the long one and the umbrella, umbrella, and then uh, you take, you can stand inside and you just like put the, the thing all the way out in the rain and you can just stand in. But I guess then you need a different tube to like blow it out. <sighs> and then you don't get any smoke in the house. And also, uh, you're cool. You're very cool. Parasol. Isn't that the thing? 
but yeah, a parasol is what you have outside if you have like furniture and you have it over for the sun, right? I'm not sure, but umbrella, it fits better. Thank you. You know what's more important than oxygen? Nicotine. But hey, wanna know the only thing better than a cigarette? Two cigarettes. You know what, <laughs> fuck it, have the whole pack. You earned it. Of course, if you're trying to cut back, you can always share it with a friend. Aw. How there is a sheer device? Wow, look at that. That is epic. Maybe this is a great idea. Maybe it's a great idea. Maybe we should have one divided by 10. It's even better. You're gonna save so much money. It's like, you can invite your neighbor in and you could do a couple of How heartburning. But you know it's even more fun than addiction. High quality documentaries. That's why you should check out Curiosity Stream. Yay! From the face behind the Discovery Channel, Curiosity Stream lets you stuff your little meatuses full of all the bizarre knowledge <laughs> the world has to offer. And with over 2400 titles, there's no way there isn't something that interests you here. Remember Secret Life of Pets? Trash movie. Turgid prose, stilted dialogue, pandering Trash humor, movie? and above all, highly unrealistic. On the other hand, The Secret Life of Dogs is an absolute treasure. Did you know they turn their tongues into weird inside out ladles when they drink just what? one of the many fun facts found inside normally full access to curiosity stream only costs 2.99 a month or 20 dollars a year which is nothing that's like a mcdonald's run every four months but if you still have your doubts you can get 30 days free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the salmonella. sign up process anyway that's all for today till next time i'm salmonella and check out this jpeg wow that's a really nice jpeg guys that is the jpeg of the day whoa holy shit i take it back it's ugly it's a nasty jpeg <laughs> Oh my god, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this with me and having great comments And if you're watching this on YouTube like and subscribe. Thank you